and we are back at USA Lacrosse headquarters here in Sparks, Maryland. The sun is out. It is a beautiful afternoon, the perfect way to cap off a great weekend of sixes. And we have an exciting finish here, Tari, between two great, two great teams, two rivals here in Team USA and Canada facing off here in a sixes matchup. It's going to be no different than they have in, on the international stage, whether it's box field sixes. We're in for an exciting matchup, Tari. We are, and we got to see the USA women take on the USA, or the Canada women. Um, USA able to clutch that win out, but we saw phenomenal lacrosse from both teams as well, and this will be no different. I'm excited to see players like Ryder Garnsey, excited to see Dylan Ward in goal. Ward well-known in the indoor lacrosse arena. Let's take a look at the rules for a quick refresher. Starting off for the number of players on the field, there are six players, five field players, one goalie. The goalie cannot leave that area of the field. They're not able to move on up the field to go score, for example. 30 second shot clock. Teams got to get the ball in and make a play, get near the goal within that 30 seconds. And it's just going to be lots and lots of fun. There's only one draw. It is called a draw in sixes at the start of the quarter for each of the four quarters that we have. Otherwise, it will just be a change in possession each time. And then here at the draw, we see two of the players who've really stood out here throughout this tournament in Zach or and Ryan Conrad and Zach Kerr here, excuse me there. Yeah. Both really known for their two-way play, being two-way players in field, and we're seeing that translate here to sixes where they really just have the ability to go on both ends. Ryan Conrad, phenomenal all over the field. So scrappy. I mean, look at him going after that, <laughs> laying his body out, but Courier able to get that one. And, and Team Canada already coming out aggressive here. You saw Courier there using his big body to his advantage as we have a kick save there by Adam Gittleman. Yeah, Adam Gittleman, such a fun goalie to watch. Super athletic, moves really, really well and able to stop Courier in his tracks. We saw Gittleman make eight saves last night in the game against the Honda looking for more of the same here against Team Canada. And Ryder Garnsey had three goals in the last outing against Canada, but three creative goals. His stick skills are phenomenal. It's like he can pause time and get as many fakes as he needs in. You talk about two players that we see right now, Justin Gutter, excuse me, as John Crawley finished there. But we talked Justin Gutterding had it weekend himself not playing right now but Ryder Garnsey and Ryan Conrad we've really seen the Sixers play to their advantage here. Definitely and Dylan Ward is taller than the goal. I don't think I've met anyone taller than a goal yet. He really takes up that cage and you're going to see jealous. that today whether he has to go up high down low. Unfortunately couldn't get to that shot by Crawley. Put him in a little bit of a split there. Well I expect Dylan Ward to have yet another good game. Definitely, definitely. And Ward starting off with the ball. Courier down low to help him with that transition. Looking to the left of the field, we see Dane Smith. Dane Smith, well known for the indoor season as well, playing in the PLL this summer. And we just had two bodies going to get big bodies going against each other, including and Curse. Really, exp we saw Curse use that big body to his advantage. Really, throughout the weekend, his defense slowly coming along. We see them do do both offense and defense in college, and now we're seeing that here in the Sixers game. Shining, and that was a shot by Kevin Crowley just wide, so USA getting that back. Ryan Conrad starting off with it. Conrad has been phenomenal, a standout player for a USA team that is stacked. And he's being guarded by the young gun here for Team Canada, Matt Wright, one of the younger players here, along with Jonathan Pesco. Wright actually being the youngest player as now a sophomore here at UNC. And that's the great thing. We've seen players of all ranges in age, years, amount of experience. Um, <laughs> Justin Anderson almost had the finish there, but good interception by Harris. Good awareness. And Dane Smith and Harris are going down. And Dane Smith and takes Dane. that for himself. Dane Smith, so fast, tall, speedy, speedy player. And he's able to get Canada on board, tallying 1-1. One, one. Team USA and Canada tied with under six to go in the first quarter. And again, Team U Team Canada elected to go low against goalie Gittleman there. And he's really just trying to find those low shots. We saw him with the kick save earlier. Couldn't get to that one there. Has Brian Trenner tried to get that one past Ward. And it looks like we're going to get a foul here going against Mark Matt. Or I'm sorry, against Haas, excuse me. And Ryan Drenner, a well-known Atlanta native that around my neck of the woods in ATL. Not, Lots of fun to watch. that was not a foul. Looked like it at first, but we are st all still adjusting. And what a <laughs> shot by Dan Bucaro. Dan Bucaro, Georgetown, well-known for oh, playing with the Atlas Jordan. as well. So good, so good with that quick shot. And again, Team Canada quickly making their subs here. And what a fake there. 
Canada, lots of fun players to watch, but there is Jeff Teat. Jeff Teat, a man of many conversations. People were holding their breath waiting for him to be able to come over to the United States to play this summer from Canada. And, and look at here. that finish by Zach Courier bodying his way into the inside. And he just jogs it off like, no, I didn't do anything crazy. I'm just I'm just here to play. And there's Ryder Garnsey. Really been one of the most creative players here with his stick skills here. Yeah, lots and lots of creativity. That's been my favorite part of Sixes is just seeing all these amazing players. We've got Ryan Conrad with it now from John Crowley. Look and at number 44, Crowley in there really a coach himself at Lehigh and really just a field general and we're seeing him communicating already getting his offense set is now being a turnover and, and Team Canada has an opportunity with Harris against Gittleman and Harris converts on his PLL teammate Adam Gittleman. A nice one there by Harris. Harris and Dane Smith both do such a great job of just scooping that ground ball on the run and going straight to goal. No loss in momentum. Let's take a look at that. Look how he just uses his time and patience to pop that on that left side. And an another turnover for Team Canada, or te uh, Team USA to Team Canada. And Zach Courier again. Courier sneaking that ball in behind Gittleman. Gittleman clearing extra, extra fast, trying to get Canada away from stealing this game. And Canada again, up 4-2 to two right now. And again, Team USA moving quickly, trying to get their substitutions in. As now we're going to see Ryan Tierney enter here. And, again, and that was just an errant pass by Team USA. Now giving Team Canada possession as they're going to look to slow it down here, get some subs in, and yep. try, try and go deeper into the shot clock. It's now it's getting started. Yeah, Chris Cloutier back in the game. Cloutier, one of the best players in North Carolina and history. And what a shot well there by Kevin Crowley, able to go upstairs on Gittleman and get his second goal of the game. Here. Oh, and Drenner hits post, the seventh teammate of the weekend for every single team. It's like the post is just helping out these goalies. And now Canada has it again, Dane Smith popping it over to his teammate number 24 for Canada, Clark Peterson, who we've called out a lot. This this Sixes game is really made for him, really as an inside finisher. We've seen it both in field and box. Peterson re really coming out here, just being himself, and Cloutier almost had that shot in, but I think believe he was in the crease anyway. Right. Yep, and let's take a look at this replay. Dane Smith over to number 21, Kevin Crowley, and just look at Crowley creating a lane for himself. And look at Bucaro using that speed to his advantage. Would have to give it up there as Ryan Conrad here is going to be pushed down here. And a turnover. Yeah. Conrad trying a little behind the back pass, but that is quickly scooped up by number 17, Matt Wright. And he'll, the slow, it he'll slow it down a little bit, allow Team Canada to sub in. And, Jordan, how do you think he feels being a sophomore, college sophomore, playing on the international stage with all of these experienced players? Well, he's, he's getting a taste of of Team Canada getting a taste of international play with these veterans as McIntosh finishes there. <clears throat> getting his first taste here on the Sixers stage could set him up, you know, potentially to make the world team, you know. Right. And we're going to get a full length pass and look at Adam Gittleman. Can't go past that midline, so he quickly gets it out to Conrad. Yeah, but you we, can tell Gittleman's itching. He's like, please just let me, let me go score. Like, can we change the rules a little bit? Let's make that update. You know, these rules, they're still a work in progress. We still have a little bit to go. I know a guy like Gittleman who loves to get out of that cage would love to be able to go past the midline, yeah. but we can't do that quite yet here in sixes. That shot was blocked and before it got to it. Great save there by Dylan Ward on Kevin Rogers. Kevin Rogers, the Chrome player, well known for his time at Lynchburg and High Point. And this and team Canada would have liked to see them go quickly there. As they gave Team USA just enough time to get their subs in, and I think Canada was trying to get subs of their own. And there's and Dane. As Dane, Dane Smith. with the bounce shot there. Dane Under Smith. a minute left in this first quarter. Canada already up 7 2. They are on fire. Crisp passes, great shots, and using their bodies. Today we have seen these teams be a little bit more aggressive. They now understand how much the refs will let them get away with, and they're taking advantage. Again, we see Team USA. Maybe it's the win, but we've seen their passes just go a little bit wide. Canada definitely doing a better job in the substitution game. Ryder Garnsey was looking for a call there, but he did not get it. Yep, Courier with it now, being guarded by Ryan Drenner, just kind of eyeing the field, pushing the ball upfield. And there's Ben McIntosh taking his time here. Seven seconds left in the first quarter. 
Team Canada just trying to get a good shot as time winds down. And they oh, do. Oh, Jeff Guess Teat who? with it. Jeff Teat to finish off the quarter and give Team Canada the 8-2 to two lead. And how about that shot from Teat? Had some momentum shifter. It's making it a six-goal game here as we end off the first quarter. And we are back live here at USA Lacrosse headquarters in Sparks, Maryland. Canada up 8-2 against Team USA. And interestingly enough, yesterday, this was this game was much closer. It was 18-17 USA. So Canada coming back with a vengeance. Again, Team USA just really sloppy passing there, not getting great shots. But t credit to Team Canada for taking advantage of that on defense here. As we see again, Conrad at the draw circle. And it looks like he's going up against right here. Or I'm sorry, it's actually Courier. Yep, up against Zach Courier, who we've called multiple times. Same for Conrad. They are both putting in that work. There is a violation against Team Canada. So Ryan Conrad starts us off and with Canada it. Canada needed that. But again, too early of a shot for Conor Curse. Would have loved to see Team USA go deeper into that shot clock. But they're still going to get possession here. Yeah, moves it over to Garnsey, who sends it on over to Ryan Tierney. Ryan Tierney, another player that we've gotten a great look at this weekend. An errant pass and for the, Team USA. And we so. just talked about it again. Team USA would love to just see them get a little bit more settled, not necessarily force the issue. And yeah. it looks like we're going to have a stoppage of play as Canada will still retain possession here. Yep, yeah, just a little restart wanted. Harris in a certain position to be able to push that ball upfield. Now Dane Smith's got it. Smith has been working hard, and look at that and pass. That was just good awareness by Conrad being there to tip that a little bit. As Rush is going to have Team USA in transition, will he take it himself? No, he's going to feed the birds as that goes high. <laughs> and great save there by Dylan Ward, able to use his height to kind of hop up and quickly react. And, and now Team it. USA, you're going to see them maybe get a little bit more aggressive here. And guess who? Ben McIntosh with the one-on-one -on -one and scores on the Adam Gittleman. Yes, great work by the Water Dogs of Midi. A good, good look there. And again, Canada. Team Canada just got, having guys be on the right places at the right time. With that 30-second shot clock, you see guys hustling to the other end of the field, trying to get that transition game going. And for, I'd like to see a little bit more of that for Team USA. Somebody lost their stick. That was 28, Reed Bowering. A lost stick there gives Conrad a chance to get a shot off, but saved again by Dylan Ward. Dylan Ward so good so far. Let's take a look at this last goal for Canada by McIntosh. Again, we see McIntosh do that a lot, whether it's in field or box. He loves those one-on-one -on -one opportunities with the goalie. We got six minutes left in the second quarter. As mentioned, there are four quarters, eight minutes each with a 10-minute halftime in between. 13 seconds left on the shot clock for Canada. Dane Smith, Zach Courier moving it around, and but time team, is of the essence. If you're Team USA, you really need a good defensive possession here, as we saw Rush with the hustle there and that. Yep, shot clock and runs that, out. That so ran out on them, could have been over and back. Yep, USA back with it again. Rush with it, passing it around to his teammates. We see number four, Dan Bacaro, with it, and he and zings Bacaro it. Bacaro gets Team USA a much-needed goal as they finally cut into this deficit, making it a 9-3 game as we see Kevin Crowley now back on offense for Team Canada. Yeah, Crowley kind of fending off three or four defenders at a time. Crowley Just right on him. Giving Team Canada a little bit time to sub in here. Slow it down, and yeah. what a shot by Clark Peterson there, Tari. That was a great shot and a beautiful feed from Jeff Teat, number 51. Listen, what does Jeff Teat not do on lacrosse field? I can't think of anything he doesn't do. Can't think. Yeah, he, he just has it all. And he's now even coaching under his former coach, Brody Merrill. And what a rip by Connor Curse yeah. putting his body into that one. Connor Curse, he heard you. He heard you say that he should take better shots. He's like, all right, well, I'll show you what that looks like. Under five in this second quarter. 10-4 USA. USA slowly climbing back, but Teat with it now. And it looks like... Team USA is going to get possession here. Team USA back with possession, looking for another tally. They are six goals behind, got under five minutes left. And Trenner behind the goal here could be money for Team USA. We've seen him do that in the field game as he tried to feed Conrad. Conrad couldn't get a good shot there. Nice save there by Dylan Ward. Let's just take a quick look again at this goal by Connor Absolute Curse. Absolute rip, putting all of his big body into it. That was a good one for Curse. That was what we call a high percentage shot. A great shot, super open lane. And look at that defense there by Graham Hasek. He's one of the best defenders in both box and field. That translating here to sixes. Yep, great, great defensive stand there. Dane Smith ends up with the ball. Timeout 
And four. I believe that was a smart time out there from, from Coach Benson there. Looks like they actually may not take it. They're just going to be back on the field. Canada's going to be a man down. Graham Osik called on something there. I thought that was a pretty good defensive credit. stand, but I, I respect the rest. i got to give Graham Osik credit for being aggressive. That's a foul that if you're Team Canada, you're willing to take, especially being up by this much. Yeah, not the best shot there for USA, but Gittleman there to get the ball back and pass it on over and to again, Crawley. You know, if you're Team USA, they've done such a great job really going deep into that shot clock and getting good shots, but not seeing that here today so far. Yep. As and Curse, Curse almost again. had an nice. opportunity. He did have one. Snuck it past Ward on the backside there. Yep, did not need any any more of an angle. Great extra man goal there for Team USA. And now Zach Courier bringing up. We've seen him all over the field today for Team Canada, haven't we? Yeah, Courier has been busy, 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 busy. All the teams are even now. Five field players, and that's and what what a defensive stand by Dan Bucaro. That it is very hard to get the ball out of Courier's stick, and Bucaro did a great job of doing that. Yeah, dropped there by Courier. We're seeing the ball now in number eighteen. USA, they stick. had trailers there, and that one was just off the line there from Bucaro. Love that shot from Bucaro, though. Bucaro, such a good, strong shooter, using all of his energy, his body, time, and space there. It's almost like they're giving him too much time and room. He shouldn't be able to get that off, but Canada. Again, they're up 10-5, so maybe kind of playing it safe at the moment. And both of these teams have such good chemistry playing together. What Team USA in the Sixes format, just be, having this being their third event, as we see a hell of a rip by Dane Smith there. Yeah, Dane Smith using his height and his body to get his hands free. It's just amazing to see how these players have adjusted so quickly yesterday. You know, there might have been some uncertainty, unsure about what Sixes look like again. It was 18-17 USA yesterday. Let's take a look at this Dane goal just uses his big body to get past Conrad and just rips it right there in his face saying, hey, you want to try and guard me? No, I'm good. Yep. Yep. And ball down there. Ooh, Crowley. And, and we might get a foul there. That's going to be a push on Harris. Harris may be a little bit unhappy yeah. about that one, but that's a green card on him. So Team Canada's Canada going to be down one. Really coming out aggressive. Playing that to their advantage. A couple for house. You don't like that, but you love to see the aggressive play there. Big time, big time. Canada up 11-5 with a minute and 25 seconds left in the second quarter going into the half. A six-goal lead. That is a major, major lead. I thought this what? game would be much, much closer, but Canada just we'll been on We'll love to point. see them get give Curse a shot on the outside, but they didn't. And, uh, Graham Hossick right there. He's a big body. We've seen him everywhere on defense here. Yep. You know, coming in, we were wondering, you know, a guy like Graham Hossick, who's a typical defender in the field, how he would play the box, and he's been playing a lot of great defense here in sixes. His Team Canada, again, with the aggressive play. Yeah, close there by Ryder Garnsey. So close to getting that ground ball and scooping it right into the net, but just goes over as he's falling. So Dylan Ward starting with it again, giving it to Courier. And Courier just surveying the field. 38 seconds left in the game. 21 seconds and left for Canada. Go, and they could go as deep into the shot clock here as they want with so so little time left. They've got here. time, and Dane's feeling confident. Passes it and off. Put a there's shot a save. there. Reed Bowering almost had a good shot there, but didn't get them in right there. Yeah. Team USA. They got transition. They got. Can they take advantage here? And they do. Curse the whole, but, but Dylan, Dylan Ward. Ward. <laughs> Dylan Ward is there How to crush Dylan the dreams. Ward today? Great saves by Dylan Ward. Great, great saves there. And we'll have a timeout. And that is just the usual for the veteran of uh, Ward, who's played in two world games for Team Canada. He's n he is certainly not, not someone new to the international stage. And adjusting the sixes is not taking much time for him. Not at all. Curse kind of stumbling off the field a little bit. We're going to head into a quick break. Um, and see you on the flip side. Canada leading 11 to 5. They are showing out today. And we are here coming at you live from USA Lacrosse headquarters. It is halftime of this Canada USA men's sixes matchup. Canada leading 11 5 right now. A much closer game than we were expecting. Jordan, what do you think it is about Canada that's led them to the six goal lead? Well, we saw them in that second quarter very aggressive. Had a couple fouls called against them. I'm sure Brody Merrill doesn't mind because to have that six goal lead, that aggressive play is really just giving them the slight bit of edge of Team USA. For Team USA on offense. Just a couple errant passes, a couple right. bad possessions. Not some great shots, but we're definitely seeing 
but we're definitely seeing them slowly improve. Connor Curse heard me talking about them in yep. the first quarter. He did. Had he a did. couple great shots there in the second quarter. If the rest of the team can match up to his play, they really have a chance to come back here. I agree. I agree. And let's take a look at the highlights. Players like Dane Smith having key to the win. Canada is just so, so good and Courier saw, right and now. And we saw with the that guy who fed, who fed Courier. Harris has had himself a good half here. He has, and there's Kevin Crowley just making separation and getting his hands free, able to dodge through his defenders there. And, and this McIntosh goal, and fantastic. Then ben McIntosh on the inside is money here as we're going to see Dane finish with his signature yeah. finish. And Dane is such a strong shooter as well, great at separation. And then there's guess Jeff who? Teat. Jeff Teat. We've only called his name once as we see McIntosh again being that finisher he is. So good. And let's take a look at USA. Dan Bacaro, just phenomenal shooter there getting it done. Here's Zach Courier with the ball, giving it up to his teammate. And there we have number 24, Clark Peterson with that goal. And Here's again, Connor Curse with his big body for it. He hurt me, and then he had the nice speed. Couldn't get, can't quite give him a hockey assist there, but actually he got a goal. Instead, he went, got a goal. And there's Dane again. Look at that kind of hitch, faking Ryan Conrad out and getting another tally. So, so good. And there's the saves by Dylan Ward. Dylan Ward has been on fire. We will catch you on the flip side of this halftime in about six minutes. Canada leading 11-5 against Team USA today at Super Sixes. Greetings from USA Lacrosse headquarters here in Sparks, Maryland. It is lit for the last game of the Super Sixes weekend. So bummed it's the last one. Canada leading 11-5 against the USA going into the second half. And listen, don't let this score differential fool you. Team Canada with the six-goal lead here. But if Team USA just cleans up a little bit on offense, they have a chance to get right back in this game. I agree with you completely, completely agree. And it looks like USA will start with the ball due to a foul. Canada is going to be down a man. We are locked in for the second half of this phenomenal, phenomenal Sixes weekend. Team USA really needs to take advantage of this man up opportunity here. Six goal game. Would love to see them get a quick shot right out of the gate here in this third quarter as they're going to give it to Drenner. Ryan Jenner starting off with the ball to his left. He's got Connor Curse to his right. He's got Ryan Tierney. Lots and lots of good options to pass the ball around. It's been so fun seeing these players kind of piece together like different puzzles and different offensive and defensive sets. As we see here, Ryan Tierney looking for a feed there. Crawley was there but couldn't quite get to that. Yeah, and Hasek did a good job of forcing that ball out of bounds, but Team USA still going to have possession here yeah. as Ryan Conrad... And now Connor Kurtz looking to initiate something. Team USA moving the ball around. Love to see that. As Tierney thought, tried to get a shot just a little bit wide. Just wide. Ryan Dunner is going to back that shot up. 19 seconds left in the shot clock for Team USA. Looking to just get another tally on the board down 11-5. And if you're Team USA, you can't let this spill over, right? You're down by five. You'd love to get a shot here and get and <laughs> cut down on the lead, but unfortunately they couldn't get a shot there. Yep. As now Team Canada is going to have possession. Another turnover for Team USA. Dylan Ward starting off with the ball. Ward's been stellar in goal, passing that off to Zach Career and to Dane Smith, who's and, also been really, really reliable. And the other goal would get him into his own right. It's been just as good. Unf you know, hard to tell what that 11. <laughs> and as we see right there, Gittleman with the save there. You know, you talk about that being down by six. You know, does it look bad on the goalie? No, absolutely not. Gittleman's been playing out of his mind today and so is Dylan Ward for Team Canada. Ward's been great and we're seeing Curse kind of winding up to get a shot there. This game was a little bit more chippy than we saw yesterday. Last Players game, and teams getting more and more comfortable. Last game of the day, wonder if guys not necessarily hating each other but just starting to get sick of each other as we see Conrad finish there. It's been a long weekend here for both of these teams. We I think they're see. just getting more comfortable. I think that's realizing the refs might not call something as much as they assumed and why not use that as a chance to dislodge the ball from and someone else? there by Crowley but good job by Gittleman getting it getting down to it really needed that possession that defensive possession there for Team USA tried to get some transition there but Burns couldn't find anybody Gittleman super good at laying low and that shot was right at Dylan Ward so and he's able to just stop that kind of with his stomach your Team USA you'd love to see them get a better shot there but they're going to get possession here subbing a couple guys as we see Drenner and Garnsey coming out here 
try and get some, the, the ball in Drenner's stick. We haven't called his name a lot today as that shot by Drenner went wide. <laughs> that shot wide there. Courier is going to get it for Team Canada and start the offensive set for them. Five minutes, 30 seconds left. It looks like Dane Smith is really their main point person for this possession coming out of the midfield, moving the ball around. Canada's done a great job of moving the ball and giving each player lots of space and room. Team USH needs to work on that. What a close call, hitting a pipe there, but a nice, nice shot right there. And now we see Corey Peterson and Dane Smith looking for something. Smith trying to body his way. Almost had a feed there on the inside to Peterson, but couldn't quite connect. Canada will still have possession here with McIntosh. 17 seconds on the shot clock for McIntosh and Team Canada. And that was just an errant pass there by McIntosh. Thought he had teeth there on the outside. Yep, the ball crosses the midline, so it is turned over. It is now Team USA's position. USA down five goals, and they want to get Team more U under five minutes in the Team third quarter. Team USA had a golden opportunity there. That I think they missed a little bit as Canada was kind of summing in and having trailers. Would have loved to see them get a shot there all to get a shot off there, but they couldn't quite do that. As now they're going to get a shot off as Conrad, but Ward with the save. Ward getting low for that one. So, so good. Both goalies Canada just Canada quickly out. with Hasek the Cloutier, and what about that shot, Tari? That a great shot like by Chris a Cloutier. By a nice four. goal. Right at Garnsey. has got it now. Garnsey known for his creative handles. Three goals yesterday against Team USA and looking to get. Let's take a look again at that Cloutier goal in the perfect place. And so I much time and room. I love the feet. Hasek going right into Cloutier's stick, allowing him to finish right there. Yep, and another pipe. We've seen so many pipes today. I think the pipe count is at 10 from the tally I have in my head. Players, I'm sure, are frustrated with those pipes, just stopping them from getting their goals. Again, you'd love to see Team USA get some better shots here. The six goal margin we haven't seen them get some great shots here in this third quarter We'd love to see them clean that up here i agree i agree under four minutes left in this third quarter canada kevin crowley for the <laughs> shot and a great save by gittleman that would have been a beauty if that finished and, and lots see, and lots of battles for the ground USA ball almost elected to triple bucaro there excuse me canada almost tripling bucaro there is now they're going to get set with dane smith and the ball back in dane stick dane has really been leading the offense he and teat look great today and just taking possession and of the ball but a great, great awareness there by burns forcing that turn over here and now usa has a transition opportunity rest trailing liam burns passes and that to what crowley a by to crawley being in the right space at the right time there and a long pass over to number 24, Clark Peterson, to start another offensive set for Canada. USA chipping away at this deficit, 12-7 Canada, still under three to go. Let's take a look at that USA goal, that nice shovel pass to Crowley, who's able to shoot that into the net. And as we see Courier here using his big body to finish, was he in the crease? And no, it's he a was not. That's a good goal. Nice work there by Courier. Zach Courier. Team Canada, again, just looking really aggressive here, both on the offensive and defensive end, not being afraid to use their bodies and go inside. You love to see it here yep. as Team USA, again, going to go try and go deeper in the shot clock, try and get a good shot here as that shot by Anderson was saved by Ward. Great save by Ward. 30 seconds winding down. As soon as the goalie makes the save, the 30 seconds starts to count. 21 seconds left for Canada as they move into their offensive set. Canada leading 13-7. We've got Peterson, two minutes left. Look at that creativity, but Gittleman was there and Conrad there to clean it up. A great job, great defensive set there. Ryan Conrad has really, really shined, Whether especially on offense, the defense. Defense, Conrad has been everywhere today to Tari. Yeah, and that's how it's got to be in sixes. You got to be ready to play anywhere, any place. You never know when you'll be counted on. There are a lot of quick switches, similar ish to box lacrosse that we've seen. Um, a lot of subbing on the fly, but this is its own format and its own fun game. And they are going to award Team Canada possession, I believe. I believe Bukaro was looking for a call there on Harris, but did not get it from the ref. Yep, and a, a minute, 20 seconds left in this game. Canada leads 13 Kevin 13-7. Crawley just pushing himself to the goal, tried to feed McIntosh on the inside, but couldn't quite finish. And there's Gittleman passing it on over to number 35, Liam Burns, who's taking it upfield. Burns kind of looks like he wants to go to goal, but gives it up to Crawley. We're seeing Burns kind of initiate that defense to offense, trying to get 
get the transition goals with Team USA. Had to slow it down, but that was a good shot by Justin Anderson. And Canada going quickly. That's Matt Wright going against Gittleman for the goal. Too easy for Wright. Too easy. Had so much space and able to just sneak that behind Gittleman. 14-8 Canada with 42 seconds left in this third quarter. One more quarter left after this. Eight minutes. Let's see how this goes. And it's team, your Team USA, you want to try and take a little bit of time here off the clock. So they're going to just feed it around, try and get a good shot. Anderson had a good shot on that last possession. You want to try and get something similar. And then that was just an errant pass. Good positioning by Hasek being right there to intercept it. And now we've got a little bit of a scumble here. And they're going to go. And they're going to call a foul here against Team Canada. Yeah. They'll award it, that possession back to Team USA. The crowds Excuse are me, that not was a, happy with that, wasn't that a foul. call. That was not a foul, but nevertheless, the <laughs> The Team Canada contingent in the crowd was not happy about that. Third quarter winds down and ends. 14-8, Canada leading against Team USA. A great showing for Canada. Let's check out these highlights as we go into the fourth quarter. Welcome back to USA Lacrosse headquarters here in Sparks, Maryland. We are back for the fourth and final quarter of this USA Canada Sixes matchup. Canada leading 14 8 going into this last quarter. And again, sorry, as we left off that third quarter, we weren't sure if that was going to be a foul there against Team Canada, and it was. So now Team USA has a great opportunity with a possession, a man up. Great opportunity to quick goal here to cut into the six goal deficit. Look, yeah. and sixes, they're very much in it here with a 30 second shot clock. A lot of opportunity for quick possessions. Can stack up a couple goals here. If Team USA is able to convert quickly here, they have an opportunity to cut into this deficit. That they do, and we see Ryder Garnsey there hoping to get a shot off, but he passes that off to Ryan Tierney, who sends it over to Curse back to Tierney. Tierney with the swirl. They are just having. Fun and trying listen, to get another tally. And listen, this is not necessarily a bad thing. Would have loved to see them get something quickly, but can't fault them for going to get a good shot as Garnsey tried to go in the inside there, but that one was just wide. And I'm trying to think through some of my favorite plays, some of my favorite shooters, especially Garnsey, Deco Nanticoke are two of them. Love seeing Lowe's Garlow earlier for the Haudenosaunee women's team. This has just been a show of the best of the best and some really amazing skill sets. And then we talked about another one, Kirst, who's just come out here on Sunday fun day and had himself a ball here as a shooter. Absolutely. USA down 14-8 with and seven what minutes left. Finish by Garns, he almost had it there, and the ref almost called that a good goal, but it wasn't. Yep, close call there by Garnsey. Looks like the ball maybe landed on the outside of the net, but nonetheless, Canada has possession, starting with number 43 for Canada, Latrell Harris. See Harris all over the place today. Had a couple of fouls there. Really aggressive player, but you cannot fault him. That's he's just playing his style of playing. You love to see that here in sixes. Yep, and Dane Smith now with it, passing it on over to Graham Osik, who passes it to Zach Courier. Just phenomenal, phenomenal play from Team Canada. They have been on point since the beginning, wanting to avenge that loss they had yesterday. And what, what a defensive stand by Bukaro, but Canada got possession back, and that almost just inadvertently went to the goal. Yeah, Bowering there almost had it. The Vancouver Warriors player having kind of a, a quick little tussle with Gittleman there to try to get the ball as it goes out of bounds. And guess what? Gittleman out of his cage. We've seen him do that a lot here this weekend, haven't we? Yep, Gittleman plays with the spirit of a field player, though he is in goal. Very, very athletic. So fun to watch, especially in the outdoor game. Yeah, Great we saw Gittleman here. at practice on Friday night. Tried to bring the hockey style pads. You saw him make a stick point. You saw him make a uh, kick save earlier. Unfortunately, can't wear those in the game. And, and there's, there's a Jeff shot T. by Jeff T. But we saw him earlier. Gittleman's going to try and do anything he can to get an advantage. Kind of just show his creativity as a player and a person. Jeff T, phenomenal, phenomenal. The PLL Rookie of the Year. He actually had 39 points in just nine games. So Teat knows what he's doing. And let's take another look at that one by Jeff Teat. And as it looks like. We thought we were going to get a stoppage at first, but we're going to keep it moving here with Curse now trying to initiate something here on offense. Yep, and USA is actually Curse down going to the rack there and Ward with the save as now we're going to get that stoppage for yep. what looks like a foul USA against Team down Canada. one man as well. Ryan Tierney currently out, and we're going to see if the teams will be even at 4-4. Four and four. The refs kind of having a quick little huddle to ensure that they're calling the same call. Under five minutes left, Canada leading 15-8. Like, and that looks like Hossett going to 
of the penalty box for the 30-second foul. You know what? We've all been there. We've all sent some checks, done some things that maybe we shouldn't have on the field, but the refs caught it, and it is now 4 before in front of the goal. Dylan Ward. It's that that fine line, and it's that fine line as a defensive player here in sixes between being aggressive and not really trying to force that foul. Both players and refs trying to figure out what's a foul, what's not, where's that kind of fine line, where's that in between, what can he get away with, what can't you? And unfortunately, Hasek was just the victim there. <laughs> Yeah, Hasek trying to get a little overzealous on those, but he's great, super, super scrappy, especially on the ground balls and just ensuring possession for his team. So now we're taking a look at a kind of 4v4 set, which is interesting. Uh, refs confirming, just making sure that the clock is correct on the time. Six and then a fresh 30 five, seconds. Sixes, fives, four. We've kind of seen it all in, in these games. You know, some of the interesting penalty situations that have been set up throughout the day today. We've seen a lot more whistles today, haven't we, today, Tari? Yeah, we definitely have seen more whistles. We see Coach Brody Merrill. Brody Merrill, a historical player in the lacrosse game, both indoor and outdoor. And we're going to see Team USA starting off and with it. it number it, seven for USA, Kevin Rogers. And it looks like just Coach Ben and Coach Rush is trying to get a little bit more clarification on the rest of kind of where we stand here. Nothing wrong with ensuring that your team is getting a fair shot. Again, Canada up 15-8. And Jordan, <laughs> what do you think are some of the keys? Why is Canada up so much? Again, and, and it's why we're stopped now. The aggressiveness of Team Canada being in the right places at the right time, forcing turnovers. And again, I do think it has to do a lot with this Team USA mm -hmm. offense, just forcing some bad passes getting shots early on in the shot clock not great ones and so for team usa here really at really at even strength but you'd love to see them get a good shot here in the four and four and, and they curse. do guess who what curse it seems like every time i ask for team usa curse. to get a good shot they do and and it's been connor curse yeah connor curse doing a great job with those lefty shots and a key for key Team Canada, who has the ball right now, Dane Smith. Dane has been willing his way to goal to get those tallies. Same for Zach Curia. Let's take a look at that curse goal again. Curse is able just to like his find other one, his own just lane. Just a big body rip. Curse using that to his advantage. That's really his bread and butter shot right there. Yeah, and there's Zach Courier also willing himself. Ducking and look at Courier evading those defenders. But Gittleman was right there, and guess what? Gittleman's out of his goal. So close for Courier, but Gittleman there to stop him. And now we see Ryder Garnsey, or no, number 23. Team substituting quickly here. Team USA, as Canada was kind of subbing, almost had an advantage there. And what a rip nice there by shot. Conrad. Great shot by Ryan Conrad coming on to do what he needs to do. I don't think do. Canada was fully set there on defense, having just really a second there to sub in before Conrad ripped off that shot. That might be what they have to do. That might be what they have to do is catch Canada off guard. And Let's take a look at that Conrad goal, a catch and release immediately before his defender can even approach him. Hey, so if you're Team USA, let's get that outside shot. You saw Curse there and then Conrad again. That's really worked to their advantage here to start the fourth quarter here. Definitely, if Canada's not letting you in, you got to find a way, find and a And look at that press, getting it right into Gittleman's stick. And the USA has an opportunity for transition. Can Trenner get oh, there? Oh, right, behind, behind the, the back. back. Oh, by Trenner. That one might be on Sports Center tonight. That is how you create your own opportunities. Trenner hustling. The pass was a bit errant, a little Listen, too far ahead, but he gets it look back. Look at Trenner. He knew that man. He knew that defender was going there, and he just said, I'm going to go behind the back. Perfect placement there by Drenner. Three minutes, 13 seconds left in the fourth quarter, the now last we, quarter. Now we really have ourselves a game. Team USA being able to cut this in the fourth. They can get a good defensive possession here. And but not before, Jeff they Teet, don't. <laughs> not before Jeff Teat has something to say about it. Teat, again, yeah. just such a good planted shooter getting that's tally under three minutes left we have seen a great 24 minutes of lacrosse and now we're in this fourth quarter um the last and eight we have Garnt here with a favorable matchup against Cootie and he feeds it to Burns with the finish nice finish by and again, Burns that's the third shot that we've had that's been a rip for Team USA the outside shooting of Team USA has really gotten them back into this game yeah, that's got to be the stride let's take a look again at that shot by Burns just not enough quick approach on that defense by Courier giving him a little bit of freedom on his hands Dane Smith with it now passing it off to see who can get a shot and that's Kevin Crowley with it let's see if Crowley can make it work and Carly kind of tied up a little bit, passes it back to Dane. The, the refs are going to let this play on, but I believe it's going to be a foul here on Burns. And that was a bit of an aggressive play there okay. by Conrad we on 
teeth, so they're going to call it. Yeah, and I think we might have two fouls, or they might. It's just going to be Burns here with the hold. He's going to go to the penalty box. We're also going to see Liam Burns take a seat uh, for and Team And USA. they did indeed call two fouls there. Burns and Conrad headed to the penalty box, and that's just absolutely brutal here for Team USA with two minutes left in this fourth quarter, down by four goals. You don't want to be two men down here. Yeah, USA now has three men on defense. Canada has all five of their players on the offense. And, yeah, just a, a tough call there uh, for Team USA. Two minutes left in this fourth and final quarter. 32 minutes total in sixes, and it's been so fun watching these. And that was indeed a good no, it was not. First, the ref thought it was a good goal. We were all faked out there, but Gittleman, what a save there down low. Great work by Gittleman laying it out there. Going to try and get some transition here with Resch. <laughs> Great call there. And Resch kind of taking now, his time. A, they are two men down allow, still. Allowing, both of their, allowing the time to expire, allowing them to get some subs in. Hopefully they can just let at least one or both of their players kind of get in off this penalty. And USA now has four players, so they're only down by one. Let's see what can happen. That shot there saved by Dylan Ward. He was right in front of it. He's been right in front of Team USA shots all day today. Very, very present watching it all unfold. We see Jeff Teat with the ball now. Teat just a great shooter, so good at finishing and closing. Teat hands that one off. And now if you're Team Canada with a minute left, you can really just slow it down here, let the shot clock go deep, and that's indeed what they plan on doing here. Yep, a great, great play and by And they've got Team Curry Canada. on the outside with the rip. What a shot there. You knew as soon as he got the ball on his stick, he was going to shoot that and convert. A great shot by Courier. We're under a minute left now. 48 seconds, Canada leading 18 to 12. And if you're Team USA, as you see the urgency here, trying to get something quick there. Dreader couldn't get that in the goal. Teammate number seven, the pipe, saves and takes that one out of bounds. So Dylan Ward gets it back. 40 seconds left to play. Dane Smith got it. Smith, we've called his name a lot. Dane Smith willing himself to a couple goals today. A great showing. Team Canada, uh, this Canada Team USA rivalry, they didn't want to get out of here losing twice in a row. And they've certainly shown that in their aggressive style play here. Not at all. Wrapping up, we have under 20 seconds left. Canada leading 18-12. The last game, USA actually won 18 to 17, so this is a great showing by Team Canada to show that, you know what, we know how to play the sixes thing, and they're crushing it under 10 seconds left now as Gittleman kind of clears it over with the long pass. And again, we just see both of these teams, it's always an exciting matchup with Team USA and Canada get to play together, yeah. and we had another exciting game here as Canada's going to take the win 18-12 yeah. to 12 here over Team USA. A great, great win by Canada, and we just want to say thank you to everyone who has tuned in this weekend. I'm Tari Kandamiri at Official Lax Girl on Twitter and Instagram. Hit me up with Jordan Johnson here. We have enjoyed calling these games, sharing sixes with you, and what an exciting time for lacrosse. An exciting weekend, Tari. It's unfortunate that it has to come to an end, but a lot of great lacrosse, great weekend as a whole here. Absolutely. Shout out to all the players for all their hard work, coaches, fans, trainers, everyone who has been part of this weekend, the production crew who has brought this lacrosse into your homes. Everyone, 10 out of 10 job, and we cannot wait to see you next time at another Super 60 event. We are calling it a day, calling it a weekend. Thank you for tuning in to Super 6s, and check out these highlights, especially this one from Jeff T.